Hello and welcome students. This is the lecture number 49 and today we will discuss bending stresses in beams in detail. In the last lecture we have derived the relation between the bending stress modulus of elasticity the distance y from the neutral axis and the radius of curvature. These four quantities are arranged in some relation to form a mathematical equation. So let us start with numericals just solve two or three numericals based on that equation and we will realize how this bending stress or the missing values can be find out. Let's see the example number 14.1. What is given to you? Steel wire of 5 mm diameter is bent into a circular shape of 5 meter radius. So suppose there is a steel wire of 5 mm diameter. It is bent to form a circular shape like this. Okay, and we have to determine the maximum stress means bending stress induced in the wire due to this amount of bending. Now, modulus of elasticity is given as 200 gigapascal. So, what is the data? D is equal to 5 mm. The radius of the shape is 5 mm radius because the bent shape will be a circular shape of radius 5 meters. So, 5 into 10 raised to 3 mm. And modulus of elasticity is 200 gigapascal. We know that gigapascal should be converted into Newton per mm square. So that for that we have to multiply 10 raised to 3. So 200 into 10 raised to 3 that is Newton per mm square now. This is the figure of bent wire sorry steel wire of 5 mm diameter. You can see wherever some amount of bending is executed on the material it is always subjected to bending stress. The bending stress varies from top layer to bottom layer. You can see this is the 5 mm diameter which is very very small. 5 mm means just a half centimeter on your scale. But then also there is a distribution of bending stress from top to bottom. You can see at the top layer the bending stress is maximum. This is the bending stress distribution diagram. The top layer sigma maximum and at the bottom layer also the sigma is maximum negative. Now what is top layer, what is bottom layer? When you bend the wire like this, then top layer will be subjected to tensile stress. Okay, and the bottom layers are subjected to compressive stresses. Okay, so this is the maximum compressive, sorry tensile stress and this is the maximum compressive stress. Okay, so here the bending stress are categorized into compressive stress and tensile stress. The top layer is always subjected to tensile stresses while the bottom layer is always subjected to compressive stresses. The 5 mm is the diameter. At the centroidal axis means at the center of gravity the bending stress is always 0 as it is the neutral axis as we have discussed in the theory portion. We know that what is the distance y actually. So y is the distance from neutral axis to the top layer or from neutral axis to the bottom layer. So you can see from the figure from the neutral axis to the top layer the distance is half of 5 or similarly from the bottom layer it is half of 5. So d by 2, 5 by 2 is equal to 2.5 mm. It is the distance y. Okay. Now what is sigma maximum bending stress? So as per our derived theory sigma is equal to e by r into y. Now e is given to you. r means 5 to 10 raised to 3 which is the shape of the circle which we have to form. 5 meters, so 5 into 10 raised to 3 mm. And y is equal to 2.5 as we have calculated above. So final answer will be 100 Newton per mm square which is 100 mega Pascal. As this is the symmetrical figure, so upper distance y and lower distance y from the neutral axis remain same to the top layer and to the bottom layer. So therefore, sigma maximum for the top layer and sigma maximum for the bottom layer are equal equal because of symmetrical figure. So we have to find just a single amount of stress which is 100 mega Pascal at both layers top and at the bottom. So 100 mega Pascal is your answer. So this is the very numerical, very simple numerical as compared to the previous chapter. Now the formula you have to remember is that sigma by y is equal to e by r or you can say sigma bending is equal to e by r upon y. E by E by into Y upon R. So that is the very simple formula due to which the stresses induced in the beam we can calculate. 
let us see one more numerical so that you can understand clearly this is the numerical 14.2 what is given in this the same type of figure is given here the diameter of the wire is 2 mm you can see it is the copper wire and required to wound around the drum so this is the copper wire which is to be wounded around the drum around the coil like that find the minimum radius of the drum if the stress in the wire is not to exceed 80 megapascal now remember this the stress 80 megapascal is already given to you in this numerical but we have to find the radius of the drum around which the wire is to be wounded okay in the previous numerical the radius is given to you but stress is not given in this numerical the stress is given to you but we have to find the radius of the drum take modulus of elasticity 100 gigapascal the same data as earlier d equal to 2 mm for the wire bending stress is 80 megapascal so 80 newton per mm square and young's modulus is 100 gigapascal means 100 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square so this is the amount of maximum bending stress 80 megapascal as well as top as well as in the bottom layer and y will be half of 2 for the top and half of 2 for the bottom so y equal to 2 by 2 means 1 mm y means again repeating it is the distance of centroidal axis to the top layer or it is the distance of centroidal axis to the bottom layer so now we have to find the radius so apply same formula but make subject as a radius so radius is equal to y upon sigma b into e it is the same formula sigma by y equal to e by r so making r as a subject so we can get y equal to 1 stress is 80 and then after 100 into 10 raised to 3 modulus of elasticity so final answer will be 1.25 into 10 raised to 3 mm this is the radius in mm so we can calculate 1.25 as in meters this is our main formula remember this so how how the radius is calculated for the drum so this is the method to calculate the same radius is equal to 1.25 meter so this is another numerical in which we have to find radius let us see some more variety this is example number 14.3 and it is also a very simple numerical a metallic road of 10 mm diameter so here the diameter is 10 mm is bent into a circular form of radius 6 meter so after bending the shape the circular formation is of 6 meter radius means 6 into 10 raised to 3 mm it is like similar wise as example number 1 if the maximum bending stress developed in the road is 125 megapascal so maximum bending stress is 125 megapascal means 125 newton per mm square find the value of young's modulus so in this case we have to find the young's modulus of elasticity okay now intentionally in this numerical i have missed the figure so where is the figure and where is y so you can imagine the bent shape is a circular shape of diameter 6 meter so what is y and what is the diameter of road the diameter of road is 10 mm so what is y it is half of 10 so 10 by 2 is equal to 5 imagine the figures of example number 1 and example number 2 or you can go back and check that figure i will not draw the figure over here for example number 14.3 so now we have to find modulus of elasticity according to the same formula make subject as e you can get e equal to sigma m 2 r upon y so sigma m 2 r upon y which is 125 upon 5 m to 6 m to 10 raised to 3 so answer is 150 m to 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square 10 raised to 3 you can remove and replace it as a gigapascal so 150 gigapascal is the modulus of elasticity so here how we can find all the missing values in numerical number one we have calculated a bending stress in numerical number two we have calculated the radi uh, radius and we in the numerical number three we have calculated the modulus of elasticity now the most important topic is coming moment of resistance we will modify the earlier equation and this equation is various uh, this equation is frequently asked in gtu exams approximately 5 to 10 times so this is very tough equation it is also known as bending equation it is also known as flexure equation so just concentrate suppose here it is the cross section of the beam the rectangular beam and here it is the neutral axis we have cut a small amount of strip 
small strip area PQ at a distance of Y from the neutral axis. Now let us consider the moment of resistance. Moment of resistance is bending moment capital M. When the loading is acting on the beam, the beam tends to beam, bend and we have to find that bending moment. So we have seen earlier sigma is equal to Y into E by R. It is our past equation, previous equation which is derived in the last lecture. Now what is the total stress? Now this is the actually stress in the strip y into e by r. Here there is a print time mistake. In place of stress here sh it should be force because force equal to stress into area. So stress is replaced over here y into e by r from this equation and the delta a. Delta a means area of this strip pq which is multiplied over here. So we are finding total we are finding total force in the layer PQ. Okay, this is the total force in the layer PQ. So now, moment. What is moment? What is moment about neutral axis? What is moment about this axis? So moment is equal to force into distance. So in this strip PQ, in this strip PQ over here, the force is acting. And the perpendicular distance of this force, suppose this is the force, direction of the force. So this force is acting in this strip PQ horizontally and the perpendicular distance Y from the neutral axis so that moment will be force. This is the force. This is the force replaced from the above equation and the distance multiplied is Y. So final answer will be E by R into Y square delta A. This is the moment of resistance for the one strip only. One strip means strip PQ. Okay, E means modulus of elasticity, remains constant, R means radius of curvature, remains constant, Y square means this distance of the strip, which can be vary as per the variation of the strips. And delta A is the area of the particular strip, which is constant for the rectangular sections, which may be vary in the circular and triangular sections. So now, this is the bending movement for one strip only, but what about the entire beam? So for the entire beam, you have to take algebraic sum of moments which is equal to same equation but here it is algebraic sum. So E by R constant coming out in sigma y square delta A is available. Now check out this formula or you can find out with the help of unit also. What is the unit of y square? Y is the distance. So y square means meter square and what is delta A? It is area. So again meter square. So meter square for y square and meter square for delta i. So multiplication will give you meter raised to 4. What is the quantity? Which unit is meter raised to 4? So moment of inertia is that quantity for which the unit is meter raised to 4. So you can replace sigma y square dA as a moment of inertia of the area of the whole section about the neutral axis. Therefore, now the equation reduces to m as it is. E by R as it is and this whole term, this whole term sigma y square delta A replaced by moment of inertia. I is equal to moment of inertia now. So the final equation is I is going into the denominator. So final equation becoming M by I equal to E by R. But earlier from the previous theory from the yesterday's lecture we can calculate E by R is equal to sigma by Y. So this is equation number one. This is equation number two. Comparing both of this we will find the final equation as m by i is equal to sigma by y equal to e by r. So this is the bending equation, very most important equation. With the help of this equation, we will finding out all the missing values, all the design of beams. M means bending moment, which will be very comparing cases by cases. I is equal to moment of inertia of the section about neutral axis. Sigma is equal to bending stress. Y is equal to distance of particular layer from the neutral axis about which we have to calculate the bending stress. E means modulus of elasticity and R means radius of curvature. So that's it students for today's lecture. Just repeat this theory. This is very complicated and very important theory. So you just go through this theory and we will start numericals based on this theory in the next lecture. So till then. Goodbye students, thank you very much, just repeat this theory.